Outside the Box Reviews, Jason Lives. And today we're looking at the NECA, Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives, Ultimate Jason Figure. I'm going to put this out here right off the bat. I really don't like the name of this figure. I don't like that this is considered the ultimate Jason figure. Jason has so many looks. Calling any Jason ultimate just doesn't work for me. And maybe that's just me being way too much of a fanboy. But this is already coming out much more negative than I had any intention of making it. So let's actually take a closer look at the figure and give it a real evaluation. Jason comes with a nice selection of accessories. And if you own the retro collection version, you'll be very familiar with them. First off, he comes with his machine which is a great silver paint. I like the kind of mottled look through it, making it look like it actually is metal. The handle here with the rivets in it, though my handle gets a little screwed up here. We get some extra black paint right next to it, and then there's a little bit of extra plastic here at the top. I'm sure I could probably cut that off, but it is annoying. But overall, decent looking machete. It's a little bit rubberized, but not nearly as bad as the retro version. And then Jason does have the sheath here on his side, so you can just slide the machete right in there for easy storage. Jason also comes with his his hunting knife really nicely detailed we have the dark brownish black handle here which you can see i got a little paint from his hand that's rubbed off on it silver back to it and a nice silver hunting blade serrated top to it sharp bottom looks really good jason also does have a holster for this as well so you could take it and slide it right in there it is a little difficult because it has that clip a little higher up but it works a lot better than the one on the retro version and it hasn't popped off on me yet and hopefully it won't Jason also comes with the piece of the fence post that he was stabbed with that kind of helped bring him back to life. We have the ornamental end there at the top that acts as the spear. Looks really good as that nice cast iron look. Cast iron look is continued down the rest of the spear, though there is a nice kind of silver added in too. Bottom here, we can see where it was welded on and detached from the rest of the fence. And about midway through, we have a midsection where it pegs together to allow you to put it in Jason's hands. Jason also comes with his tombstone. Pretty tiny little piece. Has a good stone look to it. We got a little moss up there. There's a name, of course, on it. Really crumbled detail around the edges. It's a nice crack across the back, and it works pretty well as a little accessory to go next to Jason. Taking a look at the sculpt, we do get the iconic Part 6 mask. Very simple mask. Kind of has a tannish color to it. We have all the holes drilled in it. We have the blacked out eyes that I still have a problem with. Pretty sure there weren't blacked out eyes, at least in some scenes of Part 6. I kind of would rather them actually be open holes here in the mask, but whatever. It works all right. And we do have a little hint of the axe wound up here at the top of the mask. Strap look really good and they come around the back and we have that joining section with the rivets at the back which I really like very movie accurate there mask of course is removable and then we have a seriously ugly face underneath and it looks pretty good we have the teeth sticking out here the one eye we have the bone area around the top and the wounds and everything I think it's a pretty good representation of part six Jason the coloration here is a mix of pinks and greens and browns and it makes him look very decayed and nasty you can see some more bones sticking out the side there on his head and even more detail there in the back for Jason's torso they put a lot of great detail in here we have all the appropriate wrinkles making it look like the shirt's a little bit tight on him the pockets are sculpted in the buttons going down the front of the shirt we have some blood splatters or is that paintball gun paint I'm not really sure collar is nicely done as well looks good up there at the top coming around the back not much really going on here we do got a little extra blood back there not a whole lot of details more blood there too the torso here is actually kind of a rubberized plastic the arms are hard sculpted here so we do have the wrinkles sculpted in i like they gave us the brown zombie wrists sticking out and then his yellow gardening gloves this is the hand designed to hold the machete and the knife but you can pop off this right hand and you run into the problem i keep running into where the peg stays in the hand and doesn't stay in the body the alternate hand here has a tighter grip it's meant to hold the fence post but Really? I have absolutely no problem getting him to hold a fence post with this hand, so I'm just going to keep this hand on him at all times. You get a similar gripping pose for his other hand, a tighter grip there, specifically for the fence post. Some great brown detailing in here, bringing out all the dirt and everything. My one complaint is I'd almost rather just have these two hands as they are, and then have an alternate outstretched hand for his left hand to make him look like he's grabbing some people. Going on his mid-torso here, we have his utility belt with all the rivets sculpted in there. 
I already talked about the sheath here for the machete, as well as the sheath for the knife. He also has his extra little pouch here that has like the little darts or whatever sticking out the top, all rubberized, which is really cool. Coming on the back, it continues all the rivets. And then we have the untucked shirt sticking out. So you can see it kind of unbuttoned here in the front and then going around the back, which is I think the whole reason the shirt is rubberized. Lower torso has the same diaper effect we've gotten before. So it's a soft rubber piece. It's a nice khaki color with some darker brown add in to make it look dirty. Really good detail there and all the stitching and everything. Coming down the legs, we do get some bloody knees on him. Back also has some pockets sculpted in, some more blood detail as well. Then we get down to the very bottom where it's very frayed and dirty around the tops of his shoes, which are also very dirty looking. And he does have peg holes at the bottom of his feet. Now while this figure has really good articulation, it's super freaking loose and it drives me up the wall. The head, as you probably could see earlier, in some positions just wobbles around like a bobblehead doll. The rest of the motion's decent. He looks pretty far down, pretty far up. He'll turn side to side. He'll tilt his head. There's a great range there. It's just so freaking loose. The arms are on a pin socket joint, so they will move forward, back, as well as go out to the side. The arms feel nice and tight, actually. We can bend about 45 degrees at the elbow, as well as rotate. And we have a really good ball joint there at the wrist. The waist is on a ball joint as well, so you can swivel side to side, as well as go forward and back. But super freaking floppy here. It just kind of wobbles everywhere. The legs kick forward, back, out to the side, and they're also very freaking floppy. However, this is the second version of Jason I've bought. The first one, I tried to rotate his left leg and actually snapped it off because it was so stuck. Here, I did give him a bath in warm water to loosen up these leg joints so I could rotate them, but they're still really, really stiff. So stiff rotation, loose everything else. We can also bend at the knee, it was a decent amount, almost 90 degrees as well as rotate there. And then a pretty good ball joint there at the foot. Nothing phenomenal because of the way the pant leg goes, but it works pretty darn well. For a size comparison, here is the NECA Ultimate Jason next to the Mezco Cinema Fear Wave 2 Jason Voorhees. And they stand roughly the same height. I cannot wait to do a figure wars between these two because I've got a lot to say. Because that Mezco figure it was one of my favorite Jason figures ever made, and I'm really interested to do a direct comparison between these two. And here's part six, next to a crouch down NECA part four. You can see they look similar enough. I do kind of like that three, four, and six kind of had a very natural progression to the look of Jason, and you can kind of believe he was wearing very similar clothes, and most of the look continuity is there. Even part seven kind of continues that on. But definitely this figure is in the same vein as the ones that came before him. And overall, the sculpt, paint, accessories, everything on this figure is fantastic, but these freaking loose joints drive me up the wall. I'm honestly sitting here trying to decide whether they're bad enough to not recommend the figure, which would be an absolute shame because everything else going on here, I really like. The detail is phenomenal. It really captures a part six Jason for me. And part six is one of my favorite looks and it is my favorite Friday the 13th movie. And maybe that's why I'm being a little more critical of this in some ways, just because I wanted this one to be the best. But I guess NECA did too, because they deemed it the ultimate figure. And I'm sorry, but with QC issues like this, he's not ultimate. The part three and part four figures way surpass him. You have to buy two different figures to get all the accessories and looks for those two, but they stand pretty darn well. And I'm terrified of putting this guy on my shelf because I feel like he's gonna fall over and take a bunch of other figures with him. After a lot of deliberation, I'm going to give him a recommend because I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt, I guess, at this stage. I feel like as I own it longer, if I do end up having severe issues with the tightness of the joints, it might fall and kind of retro actively be a lower ranking than that and it really is just the articulation that's damning him like this everything else i'm totally good with i'm happy with the figure they gave us but it's this is just one of those cases where one thing can really just ruin a really good figure the thing i will say is that i know a lot of people that will say of course it's like that it's a neca figure of course it's 
you had one that broke. Of course the joints are a mess. But you know what, that's not the case for me usually. I buy a hell of a lot of NECA stuff. I don't usually have these problems. So to me, this is actually a rare occurrence. But a disappointing rare occurrence at that. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, this has been their Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.